Hello all and welcome to kind of an interesting video. Um, this is going to be a review of Thief Simulator. This was supposed to be a let's play of Thief Simulator, but uh, I just got a new rig and the first video I recorded, I don't know if you guys noticed of my let's play, there's some hitching and frame drops and stuff like that. Well, I noticed the file size was huge, like 34 gigs for a three hour video, so I was like, well, I adjusted some settings and just kept recording. On my previous rig, I think because I the hardware was kind of minimal, I was forced to record at 30 frames a second and stuff, I was able to have small, qual or, or small size videos, decent quality, and I never had any frame drops because my system resources just weren't being taxed that much. Um, but this game is pretty resource intensive, it's not super well optimized. Um, I have all the settings turned up to max because I was just playing with the new GPU I've got. And uh, yeah, so basically the entire Let's Play, uh, probably 8 hours of footage, is uh, useless. It's totally choppy and whatever. So, I thought I'd do something interesting instead. What I'm going to do is we're going to we're gonna do a Let's Review, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some stuff that we can do in the game, show you some of the mechanics, and just talk about my general experience with it, and then maybe do a mission or two. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So let me introduce you guys to Thief Simulator. So as you saw, you may have seen that ad right there for Car Mechanic Simulator. I'll bring this up again later, but this was definitely done by the car mechanic simulator people and that comes up in the game to some extent but um, um, as I said in my uh, immer immersive sim list it's one of the reasons this sort of qualifies sort of does sort of doesn't as an immersive sim is the philosophy behind a lot of what looking glass did when they were making immersive sims was to to take the the sort of general goals of a sim game like a flight sim or something like that and just apply them to a different type of game you know so instead of uh i'm an airline pilot or whatever and i'm just stuck in this plane all day they're like well what if you were stuck in a dungeon or what if you were stuck on a space station but the same degree of simulation you know you want we want to make you feel like you're actually there so anyways um that's kind of what thief simulator did they say okay well Let's do. Let's simulate. Let's make a a, a sim game about something besides, um, you know, like normal sim games. And this has become more of a trend recently. So Thief Simulator is kind of awesome, um, in that it takes a lot of at least gameplay mechanical influence from games like Thief, games like Splinter Cell, um, and then of course it does its its sort of own thing. But it's also sort of trying to be grounded in the reality of what it's like to be an actual thief. So, um, let me show you some of what you'll be doing. This is the first, there are three neighborhoods available that you can rob, and this is the first one. So, the way this game works is you're going to be starting as kind of a petty criminal, a burglar, not very skilled, uh, using a lot of blunt force, uh, or brute force, I should say. And that's going to entail things like this well also I'll show you one of the houses you can break into and it's something you do early in the game and um, yeah I'll just show you that right now so what we're actually gonna do since it's daylight and it's much easier to be seen is we're gonna go over to our car now you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner we've got this little sound meter and that actually shows how much sound you're making unfortunately it doesn't take into account ambient sound sometimes you'll walk into a room and someone's playing like loud rock music and you're like oh I can I can probably walk or maybe even sprint through here to get through quickly doesn't really work like that I wish it did I'm sure that they had that discussion and they maybe just couldn't get it to work or they tried and it doesn't really work like that mechanistically another thing you'll notice that little eye indicator the the eye with the slash through it um, that is your general level of visibility, although it's kind of hard to tell. It looks as if I'm hidden right now, but that's not really true. I'm very visible, especially because it's daylight. But we'll we'll fix that right now. So another thing that you can do is this is your car, and you actually have to drive it to um, to different jobs. Um, and here's another thing. Uh, you have to be careful about where you place your car. If you park it in a weird spot, like someone's driveway, or even off the side of the road, sometimes people will find it suspicious and they'll call the cops. So you need to be very wary of your actions around people. One of your tools, for example, is crowbar. 
you can't just walk around like Half-Life with this out all the time. It's very suspicious, um, and people are going to be wary of you. For example, you know, I'm just a normal dude. You know, it's a free country. There's no crimes here. But you'll see she's a little suspicious of me. She doesn't know who I am, not from the neighborhood. But I haven't done anything to, to really warrant raising any sort of alarm or anything. So anyways, one thing that we can do is we can sleep in our car. That's what I'm going to do right now. Oh, got to start it first, yeah. See, that is sort of an interesting degree of simulation. Um, you can interact with the... You have to interact with the steering column in order to start the car. This is your box of tools. Although you don't really need to use this. I'm sure it had a function at some point. Um, and then the driving is its fully fledged, uh, fleshed out driving mechanic. So we're going to sleep till about 9 p.m. And there we go. It's nice and dark out now. So now the thievery begins. So some of the stuff you'll be doing in the early mission, and you won't have access to very many tools or abilities. So, for example, like lockpicking. You won't even have an access to a lockpick in the early part of the game. So what you're going to have to do is do something like this. Just use your crowbar, break a weakened part of the fence, go around the back here without being seen. you got to be aware of how much sound this makes, too. And you notice that the icon has gotten darker. So... It is possible to sneak around people in the dark like this. Um, it just doesn't happen all the time. So, so that's the only way in here, this window, because if this were early game, I wouldn't have a lockpick. So you can open doors slowly or quickly, I think much like in a Splinter Cell, and then climb in. Um, you'll also be given a flashlight too, but keep in mind, I mean, um, Everybody knows this. If, you, if you're walking past a house at night in your neighborhood and you see a bunch of flashlights on in there or something like that, that's probably not a good sign. So, opening doors slowly is very important in terms of maintaining your... Uh, how quiet you are, and maintaining your stealth. Um, in the early game, you're going to be breaking into places that are easy to get into and probably even uninhabited most of the time. So you'll be finding things like toasters, only worth like three bucks, you know, pots saucepans and you'll be picking those up so we'll pick up just a few of those and again like I said you can use your flashlight but maybe not near the windows because people will find it suspicious and you can't actually get spotted through the windows of a house see little cabinet here nothing of note so that would be something you'd be doing in the early mission and like this door for example I have the key but I wouldn't normally, right? And I'd have to lockpick this. I got the key through playing the campaign. By the way, this is late game for me, very late game. So I'm just kind of walking you through. So that's how the early part of the game is going to start, and you're going to have to do a lot of these kind of missions. should also point out, if I can, I'll try another house for that. So we're going to go around here, and we're actually going to get into this house. So as the game progresses, uh, what you'll do is you'll you'll have more uh, tools that you can buy, and I'll show you how to buy those later. Um, but it takes a lot of, uh, first of all, it takes skill points, and it takes tools to actually figure these out. Now, there's no one around in the general vicinity, and they'll show up on that little mini-map. So I'm just going to go over here. Oh, I don't need to unlock that, actually. I can just open it. So same kind of thing. Probably no one home. So this is the first type of lockpick you get. If you've played The Elder Scrolls, you should be very familiar with this type of lockpick. And yeah, once again, you'll be stealing things like teapots and whatever. Um, toasters, that kind of stuff. Really nothing of note. So let's get out of here. So you'll do a lot of missions like this. And this neighborhood kind of has like its own AIs and systems and stuff like that. Uh, if So people will be walking around and if they spot you doing anything, carrying a crowbar, picking a lock, even just crouching like this in public in a sort of weird way, um, trespassing on people's property, they'll freak out. Now, their freakouts have, they come in many shapes and sizes. So here we go, we can see, um, actually what I can do right now is I can mark this person 
I guess I already have. And then I can actually learn their schedules. And so you see the red lines up here with the and the time scale in the top right corner. Um, that means people are home. And the blue means no one's home. So there's a small window in the afternoon where I can go in there and grab stuff. Um, but it wouldn't be advisable to go in there right now because person-to-person -person stealth is not that great. So let me demonstrate that real quick and hopefully demonstrate another mechanic. So I'm going to try and get in here stealthily without being spotted. Pick the lock. Oh yeah, your lock picks can break much like in, in Skyrim. And sometimes they're kind of a pain in the ass, I'm going to be honest. That particular one has... Yeah, so the burglary's been discovered, so I need to get the hell out of here. So the police have been called. So I gotta move. Now, one thing I can do is I can try and run. I can try and get in my car and run away, but the police are pretty fast. So another thing you might do is hide. And as you can see, I have not been detected. The eye is still uh, uh, dark. It'll turn red if someone has seen you and they have some idea that you're there. So kind of like in GTA, you're going to have to wait for uh, the cops to leave. One, two stars mean they're, they're actively uh, looking for you. One star means they're just kind of in the area. See, they're already driving away. But obviously, if they spot you, they're going to freak out. That's another thing. Tenants can notice burglaries. So if you pick a lock and someone had locked their door and they notice, oh, it's kind of weird that it's unlocked now, they'll freak out. It can be a bit uh, janky sometimes. I mean, it's like, how the hell did she know her door's unlocked now? Um, I guess maybe she saw the, the gate I left open. That could have been it. But you never know sometimes. Um, and I think it does bug out sometimes. Uh, you'll you'll hack something on the top floor of a of a three story building and someone on the floor will f flip out, and it, it's it's totally bugged. Again, too, the AI can bug out in the in the search phase. Sometimes they'll get stuck on stuff, and and this will take way longer than it's supposed to. Um, yeah, that's never actually taken this long before. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, guys. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, I think the cop car is stuck. I'm going to, so you can either try and run for your car, which we might do actually. So I'm going to run for my car right now. Oh yeah, so anytime you bump into stuff, it just takes money out of your account. You don't actually have to go get your car repaired. So first place you'll go in the game is this place. Um, and they'll give you a little rating and XP and stuff like that. So this is a garage, and uh, you can do a lot of stuff in here. Um, I just moved to my hideout for right now. Um, uh, since I moved to my hideout, my stuff's not here anymore, but you can sleep here, and you can do some other stuff. You can hack stuff right there. So this is the first place you'll be in the game, but eventually you'll buy a hideout, which is a little bit cooler. I'll take you there. Um, actually, first what we're going to do is we're going to sell our loot, because our loot bag's pretty full. So we're going to go over to the pawn shop. Welcome we're going to sell our loot. So sometimes loot will be too hot to take. For example, locked cell phones, you know, or, or cell phones with the Find My iPhone or whatever on them. So what you'll have to do is you'll actually have to buy upgrades, software and things like that for your hideout to be able to hack those items. Um, another thing like jewelry, you don't just give the dude like, you know, a one of a kind necklace and be like, yeah, take it, no one will notice. You have to break the jewelry down, uh, rip the jewels out and then sell the raw gold and, and the jewels separately. So we're gonna go check out our hideout now. Now, keep in mind, one of the things about this game is there is no saving system. It auto-saves everything unless you die, in which case you just tr start over at a checkpoint. Um, so, 
it may not look that difficult, but you always have to think about the risk reward. I mean, yeah, in a single night, you could try and break into every single house in the neighborhood, but eventually you're going to get caught and eventually you're going to have to run away from the cops. And we'll get into some of the more particulars in a minute, but there are certain things that um, are going to be harder to steal. But anyways, this is what your general like hangout is going to look like. Right? And this is where you would hack things. And there's a little mini game for that. I'll see if I can bring that up later. Um, this is where you dismantle the jewelry. And they all have their associated mini games with them. Uh, you can sleep once again here. And then this is your computer. So on the computer, this is where you buy your equipment. So the equipment not only has a dollar value attached to it, but you also have to level up the skill. Um, so, like, to get your first lockpick, you need to at least know lockpicking level one. You have to buy that skill. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, like agility for your climbing gloves. Um, things like that. Safe cracking tools would be lockpicking level four. So, uh, and then there's this uh, sort of dark web uh, eBay type site where people will put up things that they want. So, like, let's say one of these fake Fabergé eggs uh, is... The pawn shop guy will only give you maybe 50 bucks for it. Well, if you get, what is this, five? You can get a thousand. So sometimes there are particular collectors who will want stuff. Like car parts are always, but it's always, well, we'll get into that. Electronics, so sometimes you'll be tasked with getting specific electronics, and you'll get more money for them on here. So it's a good idea to keep an eye out for this kind of stuff. Um, antiques, things like that. Then we have the steal your forums. And this is where uh, other thieves and B&E artists get together. And what they do is they sell tips about different properties. So, um, you know, loot locate locations and things like that. Like, oh, well, yeah, they have this really nice clock. Or, oh, and sometimes you'll be like, okay, you're on Black Bay. And you'll be looking. Um, you'll be, oh, Fabergé egg. And then you'll go to steal your forums and you'll buy a tip. And they'll say, oh, they have one in their, in their, uh, in their foyer or whatever. And so then you know where to go to pick up special loot. Um, another important thing uh, are security tips. So sometimes they'll tell you all the camera locations um, or they'll tell you where the, the shutoffs for the cameras are. So you can go disable them. Um, they might tell you uh, when people are out of the house. So like for the residential areas, it's you want to go maybe the middle of the day when everyone's at work. Yeah, it's easier to be spotted on the street, but once you actually get into the house, it should be uh, much easier to actually do the job. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, of course, uh, yeah, so schedules, house security tips, and um, possible loot locations. And then you'll get side objectives too. So there'll be main story objectives, right? Like mine right now is to uh, see story, steal the detonator from 301. So I have to go to the neighborhood of 301 and steal a detonator. Um, but some of these side jobs, uh, let me see if I have any. No, I don't have any right now. But there'll be interesting things too, as if as if like uh, uh, neighborly squabbles or things like that. People like if your neighbor pissed you off like last year and you haven't found a way to get back at him, you could post a job like, oh, for five hundred bucks, go break his uh, his prized guitar that he keeps, and you know he goes on and on about in his uh, in his study or whatever. So you'll be tasked to sneak in and and do things. Sometimes it's stealing things. Sometimes it's breaking stuff. Sometimes it's um. Uh, learning like their their patterns and stuff like that um, sometimes it's personal items or blackmail evidence you know whatever so it'll be stuff like that and then once you get your hideout you have this where you can actually um, kind of customize it you can buy stuff to sort of spruce it up and make it your own kind of an interesting addition um, adding to I guess immersion but also uh, this game has an excellent progression system like I said you know at the beginning of the game, you're going to start doing jobs like we just did, where you just break into, like, basically abandoned houses and steal whatever junk is in there. But then you might move up to, let's go do another job. I'll show you something else what we might do. Um, yeah. So you saw our tools are pretty rudimentary, simple lockpick, stuff like that. But we're going to go try a little bit harder job right now. So we're going to go green view. Oh, that's another thing, too. Um... If the police have been called on you in a particular area already, you might want to sleep or take a job in a different neighborhood or, or lay low for a while because the response time um, and their aggressiveness will be a little bit higher. 
And here's another tip. Always back in. One other thing that I don't know if I'm going to be able to show off right now because it's kind of hard to pull off unless you've really planned it out. Um, but you have a trunk. Why would you have a trunk? Well, let's say you want to carry a TV or a paper shredder or a server or, um, you know, a uh, 10 times life-size bust of uh, Play-Doh or something like that. Well, you can't just stuff it in your backpack. You need to carry it. And if you are seen on the street carrying, you know, someone's TV or home computer or something like that, you can bet your ass that people are going to freak out and call the cops immediately. So, um... In the event that they do, not only do you need a, a great escape route, so you need to plan where you park your car uh, close to your target area so that, you know, you can go through the woods or you can go in back alleys and stuff like that to get to your car. But also, you want to like you want to save yourself time doing stuff like this, like even just having to open this. Because if, if you go up like this, he'll, he'll automatically put the, uh, the big item in your car and then you can just drive off. So you want to reduce as many steps as possible because uh, the police are very fast in this game if they see you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to sleep again. Sleep until about 9. Okay, so. This would be a little bit more of an advanced job. So. This property has cameras right in front. I'll show you some of them. Not only does it have floodlights, but it has cameras, see? And uh, I've scouted at the property, so what you do is you would uh, take your binoculars and you would look and then you would tag it with your binoculars. And it will tell you, oh, there's a camera there. Oh, there's this security system, that security system. So what I'm going to do is I found this junction box. So we're going to shut off the power. Now we go around front here. We have to keep an eye out for these neighbors that keep walking around like this. Now, I think I can get away with this. But we're going to see. Yeah, so it's kind of a gamble if you're going to be able to do stuff like that. So, right, we're going to go. Another thing is you can climb up here to get in through windows and stuff like that. And as I broke the window before, eventually you'll get things like this, like a glass cutter, so you can silently break, break into places. So I'm going to get in here, and we're going to steal his guitar. We're going to steal this. We're going to crack the safe. Damn it. I'll get it again this time. Oh, sorry. Tension's on. That's another thing. This game is really, really great at building. Okay. So now I've cracked a safe. Eventually you get night vision goggles so you don't have to worry about night your, your flashlight wash uh, giving away your position. So actually, another thing that you can do later in the game is something like this. So we're going to do this real quick. Always want to open the garage first. I'm going to come over here and we're going to open the gate. The gate switches are not always going to be easy to get, but nobody's home. And this just happens to be a good opportunity. So this car has an alarm, so we're going to disable it real quick. And then we're going to... Pick the lock. Okay. Next we gotta hot wire it. Okay. Uh oh, we got caught trespassing. They may not call the cops because they only saw us doing it for a second, but that was suspicious behavior. And we got detected.
So typically you'll get a much, yeah, so stealth bonus. I, I'm already max level, so I'm not getting tons of XP, but you're going to want A or S rankings because that's the fastest way to progress. And uh, so now we have this car over here. Actually, I actually have two cars now. I'm going to show you what we can do with them, but I'll show you that a little later. It's a little bit tedious, but I'm going to show you some interesting stuff. So, stolen two cars now. And I'm going to show you up here we have all our items so you can keep track of all your gear. Um, for example, um, some cars, and we may do one of those missions, I'll show you that, but some cars, uh, you cannot pick the lock. They have electronic locks. So you need to get the RFID or uh, the Wi-Fi signature of that particular key. So what you'll do is you'll have, have to actually sneak into the property. Hold on. You'll have to sneak into the property and use a uh, key fob cloner. Um, and the way that works is car key signal cloner. Okay. So for a job like that, I may not need my um, my other tool. So I'd put this in my quick slot here. And then I would say, okay, I'm going to do um, is getting close to the owner and then use the thing. And then what you do is you get in close to the owner and you press it. And if it clones the key that they have on their person, um, then it'll beep. And then you can just go open the car. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but that does mean it does put you at a greater risk because you actually have to get in close. Um, but that's where you take care of all your tools and your items and your inventory. You can also uh, keep and, and copy keys that you steal. Um, throughout the course of the campaign. So if you need to go back to another house again and you know that there's a key in there, grab it on your way out so that you don't have to worry about picking locks next time. Um, the skills, this is how, uh, so you've got you know your lock picking skills, agility, uh, this allows you to throw bricks. Sometimes you'll be asked to break a window or another strategy that you can use is um, if you need to get in through a second story window but you don't have a glass cutter yet, you can break the window and then go hide while they call the cops and then when everything calms down you can just sneak in again now the window's open. Um, climbing vines. Uh, yeah, so when you're carrying big items you move super slow but you kind of need to book it because you got to get to your car without being seen and then get the hell out of Dodge. So uh, this is a great skill you're going to want. Um, and then climbing on house gutters. You can get up to the second or third story of some houses by climbing up the gutters on the side. Um, hacking, uh, so you'll be able to uh, disable power switches and be able to hack um, phones and laptops that you steal to, to wipe them and be able to resell them. Uh, you'll be able to hack uh, electronic locks and there's a little hacking mini game, I'll go show you some of that. And then eventually you'll get uh, a laptop that you can hack stuff at a distance. So instead of having to break inside and, ha and, and, and disable the security uh, cameras, you can do it from outside with your laptop. Um, these pertain to things stealing with cars. Um, you can steal cars without alarms and remove car parts and hotwire them. Remove alarms from cars. Uh, then you this oh, this is the skill that allows you to use the key fob. And then appraisal is kind of a useful skill because it allows you to determine if something's worth stealing or not. Because you'll know oh that's worth about two hundred oh that's worth sixteen hundred okay I'll take that. Um, and then obviously increasing your inventory size. Notes also, you constantly keep notes on all the properties you steal from. So on Greenview, like this, I have their whole schedule mapped out. I know where all their special loot is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and other people house, people's houses you don't. So we're actually going to go back to that neighborhood. I'm going to show you a few other things. So it can be kind of expensive in the early game uh, to have to buy all this info about people's houses. So one thing that you can do is you can just camp out here and case the joint. And what, and this, you know, it's kind of cool because this is how actual burglars work. So what you'd do is you'd show up here at say like this time of day and look through the windows with your binoculars and see if you can find anyone and mark targets. Um, and then you'd come back at like 9 a.m. and do the same thing. And eventually you can map out their whole schedule because it, they, you, they schedule their lives in chunks. So you know, okay, from this time to this time they're out. Or you can buy all that information on the dark web. Or another interesting feature that you can use is this. We're going to go back to the same house. Um, what you can do is you can go over here. I can actually plant cameras on their mailbox. See that? 
It says to come back in 24 hours. So, we're going to go sleep for about 24 hours. I'm going to show you how this works. It's nice that you can sleep in your car, too. You don't have to keep driving all the way back. And yeah, always back, always park forward so you don't have to worry about turning around in the parking space in case you have to, in case you have a hot pursuit. So, actually, we're gonna sleep till one a.m. And then we're gonna sleep again till probably ten. I want some more time at night here to show you guys some stuff. So here we go, coming up here. So now I have their whole schedule mapped out. So from 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. or 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. there's nobody home. Um, so that's a perfect time to come through. Also, uh, the game changes uh, which houses are decorated and stuff based on um, uh, the time of year. So I started this playthrough a couple days ago. And, uh, you know, it, from October 1st to, I think, October or November 1st, uh, it's a Halloween theme. And there's actually, like, sp like you have to steal people's jack-o'-lanterns and stuff and everything like that. So, um, let me just think of a good house to check out. Well, we'll go to a different neighborhood and I'll show you some other stuff. So yeah, uh, one of the things I really liked about Thief Simulator is it's kind of got this very addictive gameplay loop because you'll finish a job and then you'll you'll go back and and. It's got that progression system I love where it keeps you constantly on the point, on the verge of getting sick of the game and sick of its mechanics and its systems and stuff like that. And you're like, oh my god, these missions are difficult. They keep ramping up. I'm getting frustrated. Um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm doing things very successfully. And then they'll open up something like, you know, I mean, just imagine this. Just imagine having to break into some of these houses with rudimentary lockpicks and you don't, you don't have glass cutters. Which means every one of these windows you're gonna have to break and a lot of the windows are alarmed um, and a lot of times people will hear you break windows and freak out so so we're gonna go over here but of course once you finally get that uh, that next tool, you know, being able to remotely hack stuff, or at least just open electronic locks, you know, because there are going to be some locks that are, uh, you know, sometimes you'll you'll be asked to go to a house and steal something, and every single lock in the house is electronic, and the windows are uh, shuttered, so you can't use a glass cutter to get in. So you're like, I guess the only thing I can do is is use a uh, an electronic lock. But once you finally get that, uh, just a world of possibilities opens up for you. Remotely hacking things to take out the security cameras on the property so that no one can see you. Using the mini cameras so that you don't have to spend all day casing a property or have to spend thousands of dollars on tips. Um, you know, all of these things go together. Oh, and just, you know, being able to disassemble antique jewelry, being able to hack laptops and phones and stuff means that you can get so at the beginning of the game, like I said, you're going to be making three, four, six dollars an item, barely scraping by. Towards the end of the game, you can have hauls that go as high as, um, oh, hold on, let's go ahead and uh, go to the pawn shop and sell what we got. You can have hauls that go as high as uh, 40, 50,000, easy. Welcome back. So we got that guitar. Oh, we got two guitars, all right. We're gonna go check out another neighborhood. I'm gonna show you a more intense situation. Yeah, we're gonna go to Richie Street. So 
So this is a more affluent neighborhood, so they have better security, bigger properties, but also much better loot. So we're going to try breaking in over here. Actually, you know what? We're going to we check the, uh, the schedule here. What time is it? 1.45. I'm going to wind the clock back to about 11. So yeah, you just get stuck in this, and it just, it gets more and more engaging, you, you have more fun, you have more uh, control over how you want the mission to be, and as your skills improve too, just the, the breadth of opportunities available to you increases, and so another thing I really like about the progression system is, in the beginning of the game, you kind of feel like, I think I said this in my Let's Play, you kind of feel like a meth head, like you'll just steal anything, like, you know. A, a broken toaster, you'll steal it, I don't care. Um, but, alright, so, nobody's looking. We're gonna go here, and I think I can get this without being seen. So this is, we gotta hack this, so this is how the hacking game works. Um, There we go. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to climb. So this is going to require like a bunch of different skills. Got to climb vines. Got to do a bunch of stuff. Sometimes speed versus how much noise you're making is just a, it's a, just a call you're going to have to make for yourself. I'm going to go over here. Got to watch out for that camera wash. Go over here. So yeah, this is one of the missions where, so the, the tenant, the property owner actually comes out to the pool. So that's when I can use that, uh, this, the uh, key fob cloner. There's another wall I can get behind over there. Because I need to go over there. So as you can see, this is a much more going on. And that's kind of what I like about this game and the way that it, it progresses. It's a game where you start, like I said, as, a, as like, a, like a meth head or, or just like a common, just, you know, brute force sort of burglar. And you end the game as like Garrett from Thief or Sam Fisher or something like that. You know what I mean? You have all these high tech tools. There's pretty much nothing you can't break into or do. Um, it's pretty awesome. And it's it's just a great feeling, too, because you understand how far you've come. And it's not necessarily a short game, either. I think it's exactly as long as it needs to be. Um, but it, it basically, it does make you work for it. It's not like, oh, I do three missions and then I have all these tools. No, you're going to be doing a lot of missions with very uh, rudimentary gear. Now, I know I'm making this look easy, but I've just mapped out this route. The person to person stealth is a lot more difficult than it seems. Plus, like I said, there's no checkpoints, there's no quick saves, nothing like that. So, so we got an old clock for 900 bucks. Now, I would like to know where the key fob is. Because she's supposed to be, oh no, she's out. That's right, she's out. She's got to come home for that. So I was going to try and show you to st steal the car with the key fob. That's pretty cool, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to try and get the hell out of here. So electronics, level 2. Uh, so you even have to do things like this. So you got to follow the wires. And you have to cut only the ones connected to the battery. So that's this green one. And then this yellow one. And then this purple one. Okay. Sweet. I don't feel like cracking that safe again. I bet you there's nothing in it right now. But we'll see. So as you can see, like, you know, already clock worth $600. Um, I have a feeling there's, like, computer room or something. Like a bunch of stuff in it. Yeah, here we go. All right, so 
You can get like people's flash drives and sell the data on them. Oh, let me let me use the night vision. So yeah, event you like I said you you'll graduate from like flashlights to night vision things like that. Um, and this is what carrying a big object would be like. You know, you got to carry this painting, and this is the fastest you can move with it. So, it's not advisable, but it's doable. It's it's somewhat doable. What is this? Oh yeah, so I climbed to the gutter there. Sorry, I didn't even point that out. Yeah, I climbed to the gutter to get in here. Um, to avoid having to go through the security cameras or pick a lock outside and risk getting caught while doing it. Unfortunately, I think I picked this place clean not too long ago. I'm sorry about that, guys. Some of the loot hasn't repopulated. Loot re will repopulate in certain areas, but not all of it. So you have to be aware of that. But uh, we kind of locked ourselves in here because we can't climb out the same way we came in necessarily. So another thing that we can do, well, let me steal this guitar and this one too. Yeah, we're, I guess I'm just stealing guitars for you guys. And Wender 2000, okay. So this is the gate control for outside. And then as soon as this guy passes, we're gonna book it to get out of here. Sweet. So we made it out. Made it out in one piece. So I'm saying some of the more advanced stuff you can do. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you can hack stuff uh, up close, but also, let me go in here real quick and show you tools. You know, eventually you get. Uh, I'm going to put this in this quick slot. I use it more, anyways. Um, so you get this, and it see all those little question marks? So when you get close to one, you just pull the trigger. Is this one in range? Almost. Not quite. Anyways, you just pull the trigger and uh, you'll be able to hack uh, you'll be able to hack stuff um, from afar without having to get up to the panels and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I will say this, it's not a perfect game. It has a hell of a lot of jank. Um, I really lucked out on a lot of these things I've been showing you guys. We're going to go to the pawn shop, and then we're going to do some other stuff. Um, it's got a lot of jank. Uh, sometimes the stealth doesn't work. I leveled up again. Holy crap. They just keep throwing skill points at me. Um, you know, sometimes you'll be like... You know, th let's say this this is a person who's facing away from you. Sometimes you'll be right there and they'll just turn around. Like, or they won't even turn around. They'll just see you out of nowhere. They won't even hear you. Um, and because there's no light jam and there's no there's no reliable way to know if you're visible or not, even though it, there sort of is a light jam, uh, it's, it's kind of, a, once again, horseshit stealth. I don't know. Like, this game was clearly inspired by Thief to some extent. I don't know why they wouldn't put something like that in this Welcome game. Welcome back. Let's just sell all their stuff real quick. Good, made a decent amount of money. We can almost buy this van and go live in it down by the river. So, um, you know, another thing, like I said, you know, sometimes people can notice a burglar. Like, it's one thing if I left the door open or I broke a window or I'm making the shutters move constantly because I'm trying to get in and out. I can understand that, but. Like I said, sometimes you'll hack a door, open it, and close it behind you slowly, and then 10 minutes later, someone will walk by it. They won't even try opening it, and they'll just flip out. So the AI is very inconsistent, um, which makes this game super frustrating. Another issue that you'll, you'll come across is that you'll be in... Um, I always like my little radio here. Can I get this out of here? I want this radio. Um, another issue you'll run across is that sometimes um, 
like let's say you're in front of like a, a neighbor's house or something like that and you need to pick the lock to open the gate to get in the yard well if anyone's on the street and they're walking by they'll flip out if they see that now one of the biggest issues with this game is that a lot of the systems a lot of the mechanics like lock picking uh neighbor placement um ai things like that are all rng and so not only could the lock picking take you forever to do because you're just not going to find that sweet spot or like the ones with the pins that i showed you sometimes it'll just keep bouncing back up and down and you won't be able to drop the pin and set it um so uh and in the hacking minigame sometimes the complexity required to solve the little puzzles is insane and you're like okay i have five seconds to hack this not only that but with the rng on the street sometimes they will literally spawn people out of thin air like feet just a few feet away from you on the street and they'll already be facing you and then they'll freak out and see you and sometimes the neighbors pathing will just keep them going past the same house over and over and over again and just like especially when you have these limited time windows another thing is that the time passes a little fast in this game you know if they're going to be out from 7 p.m till 9 p.m well every second real time is a minute in the game and so what you have um two minutes or no you have 200 seconds so you have a, a little over three minutes and you know when you're trying to like go through and like break safes and um uh, break into safes and lock pick stuff and and steal everything and and learn the layout of the house and everything like that it's gonna be a fucking nightmare um and you're not like there's one house in particular that there's just no time to steal anything so um you know, and the, the families, they're always in the house and they're always walking around. And there's the person, like I said, person to person still trying to actually do like this and sneak around people in a house is virtually undoable. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. So if you get big items and you need to transport them, what you do is you go over to your car. As you can see, I have the, the skill already for moving fast with the item. And I you can see I don't really move that fast. I don't move as fast as when I run. And, um, well, not quite as fast, but it depends on the size of the item, too, so you really got to be careful. But you go over to your trunk, it's automatically, you don't even have to put the trunk down, you just, you just get in and drive away. So we're going to go over to the hideout, we're going to drop that off there. So that can be, um those elements of the game can be sort of annoying the 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 rng aspect of it that kind of and especially when there's no saves and there's no checkpoints there's one house in particular that i had to memorize absolutely everything about it you know um in order to uh to get through it and if you if you screw up even once if you get spotted for even two seconds that's it you're done mission over and um it's just a little frustrating because the, the mechanics are so inconsistent and there's so much of a reliance on RNG for a lot of the, the hair raising moments that it gets very frustrating. You'll have to restart missions over and over and over again. Sometimes you'll fail them for, for no reason other than the game bugged out. One time, um, I'll see if I can splice this in or, or put it up. Uh, I was actually playing last night and I was hiding from the cops in this junkyard and... Uh, they couldn't find me, but the AI, I think it was, like, given some hints by the system to, like, okay, he's in this general direction. We want you to start pathing here um, to increase your probability of finding him. And what they did was they drove their cop cars straight through, like, they clipped through the wall, and then they got out, and then they tasered me. And it's that kind of jank that makes it frustrating because I was doing fine. I was, like, crouched behind, you know, I was, like, I was, like, over here crouched and I was like all right you can't see me and like they were behind like two other walls and I'm like as long as they stay here till the till the timer runs out I'll be okay and then they just literally clipped through the wall the car when they got out of the car it was halfway in the wall halfway up didn't even break the wall so that gets a little frustrating um but honestly because I will say this because of the fact that there's no checkpoint system because of the fact that um it's a one-off and if you screw up that's it and because of the fact that it is a little bit unforgiving the stealth overall, as you saw, is not really that hard, but it can be unforgiving. So because of all these things, when you're doing a mission and you're like, oh, I finally got that item and I found all these other things that I found that were like, you know, like I found all these things that were on Black Bay. Like you have no idea 
when you're on a on a mission you're like supposed to steal a painting so you got the painting and then you have all of these other Fabergé eggs and you have a bunch of other loot that's worth like twenty thousand dollars and all this stuff and you're just like oh my god don't screw this up I mean your heart's racing you're super tense you're trying not to waste time here's the other thing sun sunrise comes quick and then that comes with shift changes and the guards placement will change and everything like that so there the game is constantly pushing you to do things perfectly quickly um, um, take a lot of risk um, deal with some uncertainty and that honestly makes for incredibly tense but sa ultimately satisfying moments when you pull off a big heist and you've got all that loot and you got all the objectives done and you get an S ranking and you get like 20,000 XP for it and you can level up like three skills at once. It's just such a great feeling. So ultimately, I really like this game. Now, on one last final note, as we're closing out here, I did mention something about Car Mechanic Simulator, right? And we're gonna talk about that. So you can steal cars in the game, right? And as I told you, you can take them to the junkyard and you make about 500 apiece. But on Black Bay, sometimes people will want I don't know the transmission out of this or the wheels or or I don't know the the fuel pump or something they'll want something specific out of this car so what you do is we take it over here and basically what they did was they just ported much of car mechanic simulator into this game at first I thought this was really cool because you know I like the simulation aspect I think it's cool that a thief would have to like do this himself and I'm a fan of car mechanic simulator but I'm going to show you something real quick. So, typically you'd think, okay, well this is just sort of to go through the motions of what it would be like to sort of chop shop a car, right, and, and part it out. Yeah, you're right, but I think the minutia to which they go through gets a little extreme. So let's get into it. Pop the hood. Alright, we have to take off the plastic cover. Then we got to do the spark plugs. Then we got to do the individual spark plugs, all individually. Can't speed it up. Oh, and the interface is really weird. Another thing that bothers me is that they, this interface they had, not perfect, but it worked really well in Car Mechanic Simulator. And it just doesn't work super well in this game. It's Once again, it's a little janky, it's a little buggy. It doesn't work as well as its its counterpart. And so sometimes you'll be struggling to like just be like you'll be clicking on the screw like this like just unscrew just unscrew you'll be freaking out and it just won't do anything. Ignition model, cylinder head, then the throttle. Okay, now we're gonna go to airflow tube, mass airflow. Air filter cover box. You might see some of that those Lovecraftian uh, uh, car parts down there lurking beneath the th surface. I mean, if this is already seeming like this is a little tedious for every time I steal a car. Trust me, we're just getting into it. And I do this not to bore you guys. I do this to show you, uh, illustrate the tedium in real time as best I can. Now let's go out a little bit. Yeah, now you got to do the whole front end here. Well, it would be a front end on a, on a V6 or V8. Okay, uh, yeah, next, the second SERP. And water pump. And I'm only this fast, is it? Because I have been playing this game a lot this week, so. But I was seriously, nope, don't want to put that yet. Uh, take out this uh, idle pulley. That doesn't come off, but the alternator does. Okay. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah, I didn't even take this off last time. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, still not done. Let's go over here to the starter. Making progress, right? Well, we gotta get that transmission out, too, right? How do we get that train? Oh, we'll just unbolt it, the, the bell housing here from the back of the engine, right? Nope, because this goes into the axle. Well, huh. 
And we're not even done with the engine because we still have the inti or the uh, the uh, the headers, the exhaust manifold here. All right. Oh yeah, I still got to take the rest of the starter out. Okay. So we got all that exhaust system. Do you see all that stuff back there? All of this. So in order to get the transmission out, we have to take out the axles, and then eventually we have to take out the steering, and then we have to take out the suspension, and then we have to take out all of these individual exhaust pieces. There's about eight of them, it seems like. And they each have like four or five screws. And then you got to take out the rear suspension. And then you got to take out the fuel filter and the fuel pump. Okay. And then here's the thing. Before you can start any of that, you have to do this. Obviously lift it. Got to go to your wheels. Start taking your wheels off. This is taking a wheel off. Oh, next we gotta get our brake calipers. Then both brake pads. Then our rotor. Before we can even start on the axles, the suspension, everything else, I will leave you with that. You have to do that little wheel song and dance four freaking times before you can even touch the suspension, before you can even touch the axle, before you can even get the transmission off, and then eventually you can work on that. I mean, it's a little tedious, especially if you're stealing a lot of cars. But here's what you can do. So we, we parted some of that out. So sometimes, like I said, it's worth your time to part it out. I think that's why the game made it so tedious is they're like, hey, they're trying to discourage you from doing it even though it really benefits you because they're like, hey, you're going to have to work for this. You go on a Black Bay car parts. Now, I've already sold all the ones that people wanted, but you'll see things like, like I said, like all four wheels from a specific car or, oh, I want the, the intake manifold from that car or I, I want the cylinder head. Um, and you're going to get a lot more money on Black Bay. Then what you do is you go over here And you go to the junkyard. Howdy. And here, see, this is what he would have given you for the car anyways. The Asian Cougar, 800 bucks, right? He's still going to give you 800 bucks for the chassis and the frame and everything else. You can part out every single part. You can make, I don't know, between averaging between, I don't know, 15 and 100 bucks per part. And we didn't even get to some of the more expensive parts yet. Transmission's worth a lot. The axles are worth a lot. For some reason, the suspension is worth a lot. And I don't know why you'd resell a fuel filter. But whatever, people will buy them on this, in this game. So, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. And I, I even listed my summer car in the immersive sim list. I, missed, I listed my summer car next to this game. And I actually didn't know they had this much in common. Uh, there's a lot of car building and, and mechanic simulation in that game, too. So there you have it, folks. That is uh, Thief Simulator. Um, I honestly, I'm having a, a fantastic time with it. I think it's a great little game. Um, I didn't really know what to expect going in. I had played a little of it previously, but um, not much. And when I really got into it, I, I find that the game, it doesn't hold your hand too much, but it's not, you know... It's not completely obtuse to the point where you're like, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea how to play this game. You you fall into a groove pretty quickly. Um, you fall into a play style very quickly. Uh, and you'll... I, I find that because of the excellent progression system, there's a lot to this game. Um, and it, it's a lot... It, it's very addicting and it's very fun. Um, it almost overstays its welcome, but not entirely, because it's always opening up new stuff for you to do. Oh, I could have gotten it so much earlier in the game. But yeah, so you can, you, like I said, it, it's a game that 
that has an excellent progression system. It's a game that's very addicting and fun. Yes, it has some jank and it can overstay its welcome at some points, but it tries to keep things moving. It actually sort of has a story mode. Um, it takes you from, you know, someone who knows nothing about stealing and is just going to use the most crude methods to break in and steal garbage uh, to almost like a master thief you know, like Garrett or like uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones from the movie Entrapment or, or what have you. Um, and it's kind of cool to take that progression. And because the game is fairly long for what it is, you do feel the weight of that progression. I'm going to steal the speaker. You feel the weight of the progression. See what I'm saying? Like, you got to move. Uh, you feel the weight of the progression. You feel how difficult it is. Um, and you feel that you've earned it once you have all your gear and you have all your skills. And, you know, like some of the gear costs like $100,000. And as you can see right now, I've been stealing some pretty high ticket stuff all day talking to you guys. And I'm, I started at 20 something and I'm only up to 32. So, but I am going to go sell that speaker. So, and I also think it's so quirky that it has like, you know, your little hideout and you can like spruce up your house and your, your sleeping mechanics and, it is really a thief simulator, and I think it a lot of the the techniques that you use, uh, you know, like how you case houses and um, look at that, how you case houses and how you uh, how you uh, obtain information about people's um, comings and goings and stuff like that. Maybe you buy them from someone else. I mean, that I know that's definitely something that, that B&E guys do is sometimes they will sell information about a property to other people. Um, it's, uh, and it's, I don't know if I said this already, it's got this quirky little car mechanic simulator thrown into it at, like, randomly um, as a sort of homage to their other game that they worked on. And I also think, too, you know, if that that's the only game I know that these guys have worked on personally... For them to move from that to this, with the amount of uh, depth to the gameplay that this has, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, I don't think it's going to be like a life-changing game for anyone, but I definitely enjoyed playing it, and I'm glad I checked it out. Um, it wasn't necessarily what I expected, nor necessarily what I wanted. I'm hoping that they'll make another one and kind of fix some of the issues. I wish there was less jank. I would have appreciated more neighborhoods. I, I thought that the neighborhoods were going to have a different aesthetic and feel to them. I I don't know what this is supposed to be. It doesn't look like suburbia. There's too much orange and brown and, and weird colors. and It's just a weird looking space. Um, I don't know. I, I imagine it... I don't know. I imagine the game being a little different. So did it, it didn't really meet my wildest ho hopes and aspirations. But it was still really fun. And also what I would do is get rid of the uh, silhouette stealth system. I hate that in games. It's not actual stealth. X-ray vision is not stealth. Give us a light gem like in Thief. And if you've got this stupid sound bar down here, make use of it. Have ambient noise affect... Um, have a meter for ambient noise and a meter for how much noise I'm making. Because sometimes it's nice to move fast if, you know, there's a fucking punk rock concert going on in the backyard. Um, so... But ultimately, I would I would recommend this, and I think it's a I think it's a great game. I don't know if it's going to go down in one of my favorites of all time. It is repetitive enough that once I'm done with this, I probably won't pick it up again for a long time, if not ever, unless I just want to stream it once I get into streaming. But for now, I think it was pretty cool. So if you like what you saw here, pick it up. It's not expensive, and I think these guys make good stuff. I hope that they make more, and I hope they improve upon their craft. So let's go sell this Welcome before I bid you adieu. Only 120 for that speaker. Whatever. Anyways, thanks for taffing with me, guys. And uh, I know this review was a bit unorthodox, but uh, I had some technical issues with doing a Let's Play, so I just decided to cram them both into one. Um, I hope you found it informative, and uh, thanks for supporting the channel.